Okay, so now we're going on to Gemini Svamsha. So this is the sutra that Jaimini gives in the Upadesa Sutras on Gemini. He gives merely four words, and from this we're supposed to understand all of Gemini. And Taurus was more straightforward, remember, just uh, quadruped. Aries was a little bit mysterious with the five rats and cats. This one's uh, very mysterious, and one of the most interesting things that I learned when I learned about all when I learned all the Jaimini sutras and all this stuff. This is one of the most fascinating ones. So, it, the sutra goes Mrityao, Kandu, Stalyam Cha. Mrityao, Kandu, Stalyam Cha. So, Mrityao is a word that means death. But this is the word for the eighth house. But as I said earlier, Jaimini Sutras is coded. So there's a numerical coding. And at the end of this course, if, people, if you guys like, can go into that a lot more. But this code has already been figured out. I didn't figure it out. Um, and if so, if you basically take the Sanskrit word Mrityao and numerically manipulate it through this code, it comes out to basically mean the third sign Gemini, okay? Um, and so Mrityao means Gemini basically in this coded sense but Mrityao does mean death and this also is a hint because Gemini is the sign of uh, it's the third sign so it's the eighth from the eighth so it is a secondary sign of death and you will also notice that Geminis do get preoccupied with death very easily um, and some say that the fame of Gemini's, te Gemini's swamps just tends to live on after death a lot longer. Um, so, Mrityao means Gemini, and then it says Kundu, uh, which is a word which means um, itches. And then Kundu, and then Stalyam, which means stoutness or density. Cha, which means and. So it means in Gemini, itches and stoutness. That's it. That's all the sutra on Gemini. That's all Jaimini tells us about Gemini. We're supposed to contemplate this and figure out what it means. So, of course, I encourage you guys to do all that because there's a lot of layers of this. And, you know, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to this. Um, one of the simple things you can see right away is the stalyam. Remember the sta. Again, we're seeing this, this Sanskrit root that I've talked about all throughout this course, like stira, meaning fixed. Um, likely the word stout probably does come from this stalyam word, probably. I'm just thinking of a, now I don't know if that's true though. Um, but it means like something heavier and fixed, stalyam, stoutness, density. It also even means like density of intellect um so this is what's crazy is uh yeah gemini is the sign of being afflicted by itches or stoutness which basically means weight fluctuations so anyone you know that has had problems with skin skin irritations or weight fluctuations look and see if their atmakarika is in gemini in the navamsha and their gemini swamsha or if it's in gemini in the rashi or in Gemini in the D60 or D30, um, and also even to a degree in the Pada when we go and go into that. And then also, just so y'all know, when we get to Virgo, Virgo, he describes Virgo as being like Gemini, but also with small fire and another factor going on. So uh, Virgo also can have these same problems. Um, but it's more true for Gemini. And uh, this is just really, really fascinating to contemplate. So uh, one of the things about this is that word kandu, meaning us, uh, itches. It comes from this root to separate. Um, the root of that Sanskrit word means to separate. So you see, Gemini is a sign of always trying to separate and distinguish and discern and organize and keep everything like separate and organized. But in the course of doing that, Gemini's amazing intellect, it somehow misses things, it somehow gets frustrated or irritated it, it, it somehow misses the point so Gemini as many of you already know is the sign of having incredible intellect and intelligence but what G what Jaimini is hinting at here is that Gemini is a sign of having unbelievable intelligence but somehow 
with all your collection of data and everything, you're somehow missing the truth or the big picture. And so there's an irritation there. So that's one, one aspect of it. So um, Gemini basically has these itches when its many concepts about life are not actually true or are not actually being realized in the world. And that's the thing is they have to go and like that's the thing is the skin is your connection to the world. And so you're, when you have a skin problem, it's a symbol of something in you is not connecting out there properly. And so their inside concepts, if they're not really true, there's a, there's a problem with that connection, with the translation of it, you know? And Mercury rules translation. So this, uh, this is also why Jim and I can have a lot of boundary issues because that conduit route to separate, to try to just distinguish, put all the bad things over here. Jim and I can suffer from wanting to compartmentalize things too much, as they say, like just compartmentalizing problems or issues or just avoiding it. You know, that's, uh, that's kind of what, what this Swampsha, what, what Jaimini's hinting at. And I know a lot of Jim and I Swampshas who tend to do that. You know what I mean? They really like to compartmentalize certain things. Oh, I don't want to go there. You know, Mercury is the planet whose enemy is the moon, which is more like fluid and connecting everything. Mercury likes to separate again and so it can take this to too far of a degree and in all its many divisions and separations and all its information and data and research the Gemini has collected it somehow misses the truth it somehow still misses the big picture and that's irritating and this is also uh, Gemini is that sign that is always getting the most like irritated or worked up about things going on in the world and so people that you see who are always you know, being worked up about whatever's going on in the news or, you know, the people that are really into the cancel culture and always trying to cancel someone and focus on all these things and fixing the world outside of them. They are oftentimes a Gemini Swamsha um, and they have afflictions to Gemini. And so they, their concept, they have these very strong intellectual mental concepts about how the world should be. And it's just not that way in reality. The truth is not that way. And so when they go and express that or assert that to the world, rather, they're met with friction and resistance and you get itches and skin issues as an omen of that, as a symbol of that, because the skin is your connective thing to the world, is what connects you to the world. So if you're having skin problems, you're having an issue with how you're, uh, with your boundaries, you're having boundary issues or with how you kind of connect to the world or how your concepts connect, or you're basically having mercury issues, you know? Um, so Jim and I can also just be a sign of just plain being like irritated to the world, irritated with the world. Um, it's like there's too much info, but there's not enough meaning or purpose behind it because that's the opposite sign Sagittarius, you know? So Jim and I is, is, is lacking that, you know? And it can just become toxic with its degree of wanting to separate or distinguish and then this is where like OCD obsessive compulsive disorder comes about you know or things like that um, so that's the itches thing but the stoutness is the same kind of thing because and the stoutness is just another omen where one is taking in too much mental stimulation too much info Gemini swampshes are the types that leave the TV on in every house of their room, you know, and like even when they're cooking, they want to have a TV to listen to and watch. And then even when they're over here and now they're podcasting, now they're listening to a podcast and now they're driving, talking on the phone and there's a podcast playing and they're, you know, in really busy traffic. They're just doing too many things and multitasking too much and somehow still just like missing the point, missing the truth, missing the meaning. Um, and it feels like empty and purposeless and, um, so it can lead to like this collection of extra mass as an omen of like saying you're just collecting extra junk you know what i mean extra clutter um so basically gemini swampsha has to watch out for taking in too much mental stimulation there's just so much mental activity that the mind can't mentally digest it all and one ends up gaining weight as a symbol of like not being able to mentally digest all of your stimulation and all the sensory overload so you see this a lot in the modern day you know so you basically like these people will tend to have a vata imbalance too so for those of you who study ayurveda this connects to like vata and what a lot of people understand is that obesity is actually a vata disorder 
because vata deals with extremes of any sort and not being able to move things. So when you can't move the junk out of you and you get constipated, and, you know, stocked up and backed up, you're, you're, that's a obesity, that is a vata issue because the wind element is not moving things through you. Um, a lot of people just think it is a kappa issue. So, yeah, this is a really interesting concept, you know, the, uh, the stoutness, the weight fluctuations. Anytime you have a client that's dealing with weight fluctuations, look and see if Gemini is afflicted or if Virgo is afflicted. And that means that there's problems with their earth element. And so they're going to accumulate too much mass, too much earth, and too little at other times. Everyone that I know who's had really strong weight fluctuations in their life, like gained a lot of weight or lost it, they've had a Gemini Swamsha. So, uh, when I, whenever we get around to learning about the five elements, I may, uh, depending on where like these Gemini classes end up being in my course, you may have already learned about them or you may be about to learn about them, who knows, but um, in the five element system, the earth element it uh, it's like so every basically every every one of the five elements kind of like helps to um, helps to generate and and nurture and develop another element and then it helps to control another element that one's grandchild and then it gets insulted by that other element which keeps it in check so all the elements are kind of keeping each other in check and so you see mercury represents the earth element and the earth element deals with like stuff and clutter. And what can happen with the earth element is the earth element can insult the akash or the sky or wood element, as Chinese medicine calls it, the Jupiter element. And so when Mer Mercury, the earth element, gets too active or too strong, it insults Jupiter. And so there is too much. Uh, See, there's too much mental clutter for Jupiter for clarity to come through, for Akash, sky, for space, for clarity, perception, you know, to come through and light. Um, so that's a, another way you can kind of see that. So it's like too much uh, mental clutter gives rise to the itches, probably, and then too much physical clutter gives rise to the stoutness. So this is fascinating because, like, I know one person who is actually, like, loves collecting antiques and all this stuff and uh, she's had a lot of weight issues a lot of weight fluctuation issues where she'll be gaining 20 pounds a few months then losing it and this and that and she loves to collect things she happens to be a gemini swampsha so this is a textbook thing that she has and she's always like over multitasking herself like overwhelming herself with too much stimulation and sensory overload um, and, but she's a master of trivia. She was even um, on the tryouts for Jeopardy, but she just kind of panicked under the pressure due to other things in her chart. But uh, that's the thing is Geminis are masters of trivia. Geminis love trivia, but see in the collecting of all these interesting but useless things like this, they collect all this interesting information, but it's like useless at the end of the day that it can be an omen of stoutness because they have too much junk and it's not going somewhere. It's not going to a purposeful place, which is Sag, the archer, the bowman, the opposite sign. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking of another person who is like a comic book nerd collector, like these types of guys that like love collecting things. You see, their earth element is getting excessive. They oftentimes are overweight, these comic book nerd type guys. You see, they oftentimes have excessive stoutness as an omen of basically you are focusing too much on all these meaningless things that don't actually add up to a purpose, you know? Um, and... The only other person I know who's really, the only other two other people I know who are like really, really well known for trivia and friends of mine, uh, they also have Gemini Swamsha. Um, so yeah, this is really interesting, but all that collecting of all that uh, stuff, even physically, it insults the wood element, it insults the Akash or the sky or Jupiter element, which is the element of like our purpose, our joy, our happiness, our spiritual connection. So Jupiter suffers when Mercury gets excessive. And even when you guys learned, when you learned about the enemies, the friends and enemies, remember Jupiter, is, one of his enemies is Mercury. And it's because of this reason. So Gemini Swamsha it is, in a way, it's part of their Dharma, sure, to collect useless but interesting information, 
but they have to watch out for this getting out of hand and their own mental concepts getting the best of them um, and getting worked up over things without and somehow missing the truth you know what I mean and getting the issues like so anyone who has issues with eczema uh, skin problems psoriasis uh, allergies too they don't mention that but that's also a Gemini thing or weight fluctuations look and see if Gemini Swamsha is afflicted and remember what we mean by that is basically malefic planets Rashi aspecting it or malefics in there in bad dignity but you'll all you'll very frequently see cruel planets Rashi aspecting Gemini um, for the people who have these problems then people who have great skin or great issues with these they will have benefits aspecting Gemini and be having that going well so yeah those are the main ones um, I, I can't wait to give a lot of examples when we go over this uh, we'll, I'll save so, examples for that uh, one other really interesting thing about this Gemini and this irritation quality is that you know this is the third sign now the number three planet is not Mercury it's Mars you might have you know uh, it's like we talked about earlier Mercury is the number four that comes after it but Mars is the number three so three is a triangle if you think about a triangle it's like okay there's there's positive negative and there's a middle point to view them both so there's male female now there's child you know so there's this like middle way point to with which to view things so this is why Gemini is a sign of concepts you know because we finally have this viewpoint with which to observe um, this is why the number three was associated with wisdom in a lot of ancient occult traditions especially Vedic culture but a lot of them like in the Pythagorean mystery schools that like I keep kind of mentioning every now and then they saw this as the uh, triad, triad, was that what they called it? Yeah, the triad, because the tetrad means four, right? Triad, um, and this was considered a number of wisdom because of this middle, this balance point. It was in between the two extremes of not knowing, ignorance, and false knowing. You know, it was, uh, or thinking we knowing, thinking we're knowing, or just knowing whatever we do know. It was in the middle point, symbolizing more equilibrium, balance, uh, and, out of this that fire element comes about you know Mars the fire element the vision the viewpoint you know what I mean fire is triangular in its shape even you know the word pyramid comes from the same Latin root pyro like pyrotechnic see like a like a like fire you know what I mean so pyramid and triangular is fire like in its shape the tetrad is the platonic solid that relates to this and it's you know it has this fiery kind of shape to it and so yeah, like uh, these two extremes, this is the middle point. And this is why for Gemini, isn't it fascinating how Gemini uh, at least strives to be rational and mixed and balanced, like good journalists have a good Mercury, you know, like being mixed and balanced and uh, uh, in the middle, you know what I mean? And um, not taking a side when they report things. That's how Mercury and Gemini is supposed to be. Uh, as long as we're talking about Greek and ancient stuff, Gemini uh you know in ancient times it fell where Sirius the dog star aligned with and so Gemini and Mercury was considered to be very faithful to the message like a dog you know what I mean and so Mercury was all about being true to the message the idea to saying don't shoot the messenger you know um this is Mercury's job you know he was Hermes in Greek mythology he was the messenger of the gods so it's about messaging concepts getting the picture cognition awareness and naturally when that gets out of hand you get you're gonna have some kind of weird psychological issues and that's what this OCD these allergies these stoutness and itches and skin problems come in for um, so yeah it's like the duad is like this the duad the two is chaos and duality the tetrad kind of anchors that a little bit and it's where we get our first like viewpoint from and so that is Mars which is the three and this is why Mars is the Karaka of the third house and of brothers and of the D3 Varga but that's what's kind of funny is that Mercury is the Lord of, of the third sign not Mars and Mercury and Mars do kind of overlap a little bit it's like 
Mercury and Mars are both about solving problems and efficiency, but Mercury uses intellect and concepts primarily, whereas Mars uses just willpower. Look, there's an ibis. That's the, uh, well, I don't know if you could see that or not, but that is the bird of, actually, of Mercury. Uh, in Egypt, Thoth, Hermes, uh, Thoth was considered a reincarnation of Hermes or Mercury for Egyptian culture, and he gave writing, and he was the ibis-headed god who had the little, the little pen-like nose. It's like those birds have a big long nose that they pick through the sand with, so it looks like they're writing. So there you go, there's an omen of this. Ibis is, the, is a bird that relates to Mercury. Mercury also rules the sky form uh, in terms of forms. Mercury and sun rule, rule, sorry, the sky form is the bird form, Sanskrit word for the bird form. So Mercury rules birds also in general, but especially that type of bird. Um, and yeah, so Mercury is more about using skills and intelligence. Mars is about using fire and willpower, but they both overlap a lot. Um, and so you see that all this stuff about mental concepts, what's the remedy? All right, so we've learned like, Gemini is the sign that, you know, if you have a client who's dealing with skin problems or allergies or weight fluctuations, check Gemini. If it's afflicted, then what do you do? You don't just tell them, well, you got the problems, deal with it. No, tell them this. They basically need to learn to develop a philosophy or a system of viewing life that gives it more meaning. And one of the cool things of this is actually studying astrology because it helps you see how everything is Vishnu, everything has its play and then you become more even-minded. But basically, these people need a path in life that is more of like a non-dualistic path, like everything is Vishnu, seeing everything as one thing. So these people can do very well with uh, a bhakti yoga path, actually, of just seeing everything of like God or Vishnu or whatever, um, a, one, a oneness path, but also of a like a, a dhyana yoga path, a path of self-inquiry, a path of using the intellect and the mind to meditate and inquire and basically reverse that flow of thought um, back into the self. So uh, there's a lot of different cool remedies that we can go into. I'll go into that more in the examples, but yeah, there's a lot of cool things. Basically, they, these people can do really well by like reading the Srimad Bhagavatam or taking an approach to life that sees that, okay, I just pulled out in traffic and this guy just pulled out in front of me and almost killed me. What does it matter? Vishnu just almost ran into Vishnu. I guess Vishnu needs to get to work before Vishnu does. Everything is Vishnu. What does it matter? You know, oh, my girlfriend broke up with me and my friend cheated on uh, or, you know, she cheated on me with my best friend. Oh, well, Vishnu decided to go and have sex with this Vishnu and not that Vishnu. What does it matter? So basically, you can, re you can actually use that intellect to empower yourself and to become detached and even-minded and start to see God in everything. And so it's, you know, there can be a path where you basically turn your intellect, you make it sink into your heart and love everything, or you can basically just use the intellect, studying astrology, all these different things, all this Vedic philosophy we're doing in this course to basically spiritualize your entire intellect and see everything as God. And that's like a dhyana yoga path. So Vedic astrology is itself a spiritual path and it can be very helpful for people with strong Gemini stuff. So that's why I wanted to mention it. Okay, thanks you guys.